All right, guys, so I got something new here. Santa Claus brought me. Today is uh, December 26th, the day after Christmas, and uh, this just came via FedEx today. So the neat thing is if you've ordered one of these like I did a long time ago, it took several, several weeks for it to ship, but once it shipped, it got here super fast. I actually even posted on Facebook about it because it left Hong Kong at like 11 a.m. and it 12 p.m. it was already in Memphis. Obviously, uh, there's some time zone stuff happening, but anyway, it's still pretty cool that uh, it got over here that quick. So, so if you order one of these, just know that it takes a long time for them to ship, but once they ship, they get here pretty fast. So this, my friend, is the DJI Race Edition goggles. So I had never messed with the original DJI goggles, but apparently they're very, very similar. The one difference is there is an SMA antenna port. Now, I'm gonna make a series of videos. Today, we're gonna focus primarily on latency because that's what I wanted to know the most. But just a quick overview of these goggles. So it's an RPSMA port, but it's backwards compared to any other SMA port I've ever seen. So typically, an antenna has this type of end right there. I get them mixed up, but I think this is what you would call the female end. That's typically what you find on the end of an antenna. However, for this model, you need an antenna that's like this, that has an RPSMA male end. So, I mean, this is substantially different than any other antenna situation I've ever seen, and I don't know if they're trying to keep you from using aftermarket stuff or what, but, um, this is pretty crazy. I'll put a link in the description to an adapter on Amazon that I ordered that will allow me to use my other antennas because um, I heard one person say they think that these are left-handed Pagoda antennas. I do not know. I don't know a ton about Pagoda antennas, so I would rather use you know the antennas I have. And also in a future video, I'm going to try to use an external video receiver for these. For me, I am an avid racer. I am into drones. I do drones for work. I'll be using Using these quite a bit for work. If I have to get some aerial photography of the house, I prefer to use goggles, and I think these will be great for that purpose. The big thing that I think people want to know is how are these goggles as a replacement for a set of Fat Sharks? Now, I currently have the Fat Shark HD3 goggles with the True D Diversity video receiver, but you know, there's several things that will have to happen for this to be a good racing goggle. The fit obviously is going to be a no go for some people. For me, I don't mind it, just an initial impression when I put them in. I put them on. I did do a super quick flight earlier with a battery at storage voltage just because I was curious how they felt. But when I put these on, I did notice quite a bit of light leakage. But when I actually started flying, I didn't notice it at all. So there's a lot of cool things going on here. You probably noticed, you've probably seen in other videos that you can zoom the size of the image and that's pretty cool. What kind of latency is there on the analog receiver input? So there's a lot of data about what the latency will be for the OcuSync digital video signals. I mean, they say that's around 50 milliseconds, but it was a little confusing in regard to whether or not there was any latency when it comes to the analog 5.8 video receiver. So I'm gonna do some testing today between this and my Fat Shark goggles. In your FPV system, there's always gonna be a certain amount of latency, and so I'm interested to see what that is in the Fat Sharks, and then we'll compare that to what that is here. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be shooting this on Christy and I, iPhones in slow motion mode. So that's going to give us 240 frames per second, which should give us a resolution of four to five milliseconds that we can use to measure the latency. So I hope it works. We'll see how it goes. And uh, here we go. All right, guys. So I'm working on getting set up here. I've got the DJI goggles. I got two iPhones that shoot at 240 frames a second. I've got my Fat Shark uh, HD3s with the True D diversity receiver. And I've got a quadcopter. All right, so I'm gonna start by getting the two cameras synced up without looking through the goggles. So I've got one camera there watching the quad. This camera I'm gonna stick in the goggle to see the view. But first I need to get my constant. So I'm gonna do a little clap test outside of the goggles first. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. Here's my clapper. So now that we got the constant, let's stick this in so it can see what the goggles see. We'll get the quad to where it can see the clapper and uh, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, here we go. So that's it with the DJI goggles. Now let's do it with the Fat Sharks and see what that latency looks like. All right, 
So I know that YouTube obviously doesn't work at 240 frames a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my screen capture on my computer and uh, we'll pull this footage into Premiere and we'll see what we get and uh, we'll talk about the results. So let's do it. All right, so I got everything set up here in Premiere. I was wrong about one thing. The video files on our new iPhones apparently are at 300 frames per second. So what I've done here is I've got a session in Premiere set up, 30 frames a second, and then I've got my video file slowed down to 10%. And that was the only way I could get each frame, you know, individual. So this bottom video file is the control, and this top video file is what we saw through the goggles. This instant is my constant, I guess. So if you see, if I go back a frame, there's still space between the two boards on both video files. That one's a little blurry. That split right there is exactly lined up with when the clapper clapped. <laughs> So that's how I synced up the footage. And if I skip ahead here, remember this, uh, the bottom file is the control, what we saw from over at the side. If you see here, this first line is where the two boards clapped together. This top video file is what we saw through the DJI goggles. That's what we're working on right now is we got the DJI goggles up here. So if I activate that top one, you can see the boards have not clapped together yet. And if I go forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's somewhere between 13 and 14 frames, then uh, the boards clap together. That's how much latency there is between the two files. We'll call it 13 and a half frames just to be safe. So if I bring in my trusty calculator here, a second is made up of a thousand milliseconds. So if we do 1000 milliseconds divided by 300 frames, that means that each frame is worth 3.33333 milliseconds. So if we multiply that by, we'll do 13.5. That gives us 45 milliseconds of latency in the DJI goggles through the analog video signal. That's what we're dealing with here. Obviously, I don't have anything to do with OcuSync yet. This is just through the analog video signal. Uh, that's pretty interesting. If we zoom back out here and we jump ahead, this is the Fat Shark goggles with the True D video. So if I head over here to the constant by muting the top video channel or by hiding the top video channel, you can see that first line is the instant where the clappers clap. <laughs> So that's that. And then if I bring in the top video file, this is through the Fat Shark goggles with the Trudy receiver module. And if I go ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere between seven and eight frames, that's where they clip together. The Fat Shark goggles will call seven and a half frames. So I'm gonna do the same math again. That there is for the uh, GJI goggles. And this will be for the Fat Shark goggles with the True D. So if I do a thousand milliseconds divided by 300 frames, 3.33333 times, and we'll do this one as 7.5 frames, 25 milliseconds. So what we're used to being FPV pilots racing through these goggles, we're used to about a 25 millisecond latency. Just so you guys know, I'm using the Runcam Micro in this build with the Mach 2 video transmitter. Like I said, the uh, True D receiver module and Fat Shark goggles. So with that setup, kind of what we're used to is a 25 milliseconds worth of latency. These DJI goggles, in comparison, we get 45 seconds worth of latency through the analog video input. I don't know if that's gonna be acceptable or not. I'm gonna do some flying with these DJI goggles and see uh, if I can get used to them, see if it's too much of a detriment. To be completely honest, I don't know. Maybe the, the picture quality, because the picture quality in these goggles is superb, maybe that picture quality is gonna be worth that extra latency. So we'll see. I'll definitely keep you guys posted with that moving forward. I am going to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, quits for this video. Hopefully it helps you out. I will put links to uh, all the stuff I talked about in this video in the description. So if you wanna buy any of this stuff, please uh, feel free to use those links. It helps me out. Tune in later as I do a test of the receiver itself. We'll see uh, how it stacks up. Finally, we'll see if I'm able to get an external video source working with minimum latency in these goggles. So guys, I hope this is helpful to you. I look Look forward to uh, seeing what you guys have to say in the comments and we'll catch you next time with Heart of America FPV.